Hello and welcome to Stupid Ancient History with Midgley and Taylor and our expert, non-expert, special guest James, Lord High Commander of the Science Cupboard, first of his name and knower of nothing. Hello. Uh, as always we're wearing togas, we're eating olives and today we're going to look at the rise of Lucius Tarquinius Superbus or Superbus. Previously on Stupid Ancient History, we've been charting the rise and reign of the first two Tarquin kings, Tarquinius Priscus and Servius Tullius. Or the amazing flame boy to his friends. <laughs> and how despite some, shall we say, irregularities in how either one came to power, they both seem to have pretty successful reigns. I mean, by irregularities, do you mean cheating to get where uh, they need to be? Yeah, mm, let's just call it irregularities. Okay. But cheating. Yeah, and um, what is clear is that by the time of Servius's rule, Rome has entered a whole new stage in its development, already a very, very long way from its early days under Romulus. Yeah, so it was less about omens from the gods and more, let's hold a census. Yeah, everyone loves <laughs> a census. Uh, as we get further and further away from Romulus, I'm, is it weirder and weirder I keep mentioning wolf prostitutes? It, <laughs> it, was, it was always a bit weird. <laughs> Yes, it is always a bit weird. That's why I keep mentioning it. <laughs> yeah, it is still a bit weird. Um, but also, it's worth pointing out that um, in the reign, or certainly rise of both kings, um, it's Tarquinius's wife, Tanaquil, who was the driving force behind all of these actions. Tell you what, it's just... It's starting to take the biscuit in it, this. <laughs> always blaming women for when anything slightly dodgy goes on and anything goes wrong. It's not always the female sex that are to blame. Not according to the Romans, though. No. Well, wasn't it, yeah, the Sabine's fault they got kidnapped? Yep. <laughs> yep, and they stand by that. Mm, yeah, whatever. Right, so last time we were talking, you were telling me about, you know, the censuses. Yeah. <laughs> Numerous censuses. Sensei. Is it, I was about to ask what the plural is. Uh, but you said the kind of end point of this seemed to be having no more kings. And now you're talking about another one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what's going on? <laughs> right. So you're right. We did say that. Um, but the problem is it's impossible to separate the death of Servius from the rise of Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, the that's, next king. That sounds ominous. <laughs> well, it certainly wasn't good for uh, Servius, let's just no. put it that way. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, but to understand what happens, we need to go way back to the early part of Servius's rule. Is this to do with the census? It's before the census. Oh, <laughs> no. it wrong, James. It's the census. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were done with the asses. I thought the asses were <laughs> entrenched and set up. There, there, there's, there's always time for more. There's always an outlier. <laughs> there's always an outlying ass. <laughs> and she's sat right there. <laughs> so anyway, the problems all start when Servius decides to marry his daughters <laughs> to the sons, or grandsons, Livy doesn't know, um, of Tarquinius Priscus. Yeah, so to avoid any shepherd-based murder... <laughs> I was about to say the, the shepherd <laughs> yeah. boy. It's the shepherd, yeah. yeah, as had happened the last time, there was a disagreement about who should be king. Yes. Yeah. So, this sounds like a terrible idea to me. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that. We'll see. Is, is, is Superbus one of these two? Yes. Oh, okay. Are you sitting comfortably, James? Why? <laughs> <laughs> What's about to happen? Because what follows is a tale of lies, infidelity, corruption, murder and mutilation that makes daytime US soaps seem believable. That actually sounds like what I watch most days when I go home. You were telling me you watch like crime dramas and stuff I do earlier. Like, yeah, I like crime dramas and things like uh, serial killers. Right, I didn't think this was going to go well. You've set the stage up for this going pretty poorly for this bloke. Well, yeah, it, it gets a little more complicated, shall we say. Okay. So, okay. So, I, I, where are we up to now? He's got two daughters, and he's marrying them to the Shepherd Boys. Yeah. Okay. Not the Shepherd Boys. Well, well the, the guys who hired the Shepherds, wasn't they? No. Oh, wasn't it? No, they were the previous... It's already far too complicated. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> They're the sons of the guy who was done in by... Shepherd boys. Ah, right, okay, yeah. Just imagine that this is like an ancient version of Jack and Nori. Well, just gonna read you a story. Don't read this. Don't be horrible. Children. <laughs> children don't need to hear this. 
Right. Oh, okay, go on. So, it all begins with the marrying of Servius's daughters, mm -hmm. who were both called Tullia. They did this, didn't they? They had the elder and the younger yeah. and stuff, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, so he's marrying his two daughters to the sons... Our grandsons. ...of Tarquinius Priscus. Yes. Are you confused yet? No, no, I'm following. Um, and Livy tells us that even though Servius's daughters have the same name, they are very different in character. Okay. So the eldest, let's call her Tullia One, <laughs> just for argument's sake, is um, very much like me, uh, mild-mannered, quiet and calm. <laughs> <laughs> you have scores of episodes of this podcast proving you're not <laughs> mild, quiet or calm. <laughs> and then the younger Tullia, so let's call her Tullia Two, um, is the exact opposite. She's a bit of a live wire. She's quite ambitious. She's very demanding. Okay. I'm starting to perhaps see where this is going. <laughs> so, the younger ones are always the problem. <laughs> well, I agree. I mean, my younger yeah. brother is like, you know, golden child. Actually, no, I'm the youngest. What am I saying? <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> you're the evil one. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Oh, God, we're just going to give him right. ideas so now. So, there's a, a nice one and an evil one, basically. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Like the twin thing, you know, nice one, evil one. Yeah. Now, thankfully, the two sons... Our grandsons. Mm -hmm. ...of Tarquinius Priscus have different names. Okay, good. It's, like, it's not like <laughs> Bill and Bill or something. No. Bill and Ben. <laughs> the elder of the two is called Arons. Arons, okay. Who Livy describes as a kind of mild-mannered young man. Okay. The younger... Yes. He's called Lucius. And Livy says he was a hot-headed youth himself. Right. I'm noticing a pattern here. Yep. There's a nice one and an evil one in yeah. both, both we, sets. We should also point out, you can't see it, but James is actually writing this down I am. and trying well, to no, draw I'm, it out. I'm just writing down names with brackets nice next to them <laughs> so I can keep track. you like a bizarre Santa. Well, well yeah. <laughs> you know when we're saying that the women have the same name, is it just that if one of them died, then they basically just... I thought that. Could just, like, carry on and was just, that, like, was get that, my Was that common for, for boys as well? Yeah. Right, so like, was it because death, like, at young age was quite common? Possibly, or like, maybe I've, I've, they were just lazy. I've got James Jr., I'll have James Jr. too, just in case James Jr. dies. Yeah, I mean, maybe they were just a bit lazy, I mean. <laughs> but then, you're gonna, if you take it to the nth degree, you've got people like Ramesses II, who had over a hundred kids. True. So he probably got <laughs> bored really halfway through, going, I can't think of any more names. Mm, so anyway, back to the story. Okay. <laughs> got... Good son, evil son. Good daughter, evil daughter. Yep. There we go. Yeah, pretty much. So, in an attempt to try and balance out the characters, mm -hmm. um, Servius marries Tullia II. The mad one. Yeah. To Arons. Nice one. The calm one, yeah. Yeah. And he marries Tullia I. The nice one. To Lucius. The mad one. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Ultimately, he's hoping the calming influence of Arons and Tullia will work its magic on the more, should we say, hot-headed of either parent. Now, how hot-headed are we talking? Not like fiery head, that's Well, so no, 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 not that. But are we talking, like, little bit off the rails? Are we talking about, like, off the map? You'll find out. Okay. <laughs> so you'd think that that would be the end of that. We probably wouldn't be talking about yeah. it if it was. <laughs> no, that's true. But no. It's not quite that straightforward. So, what Livy tells us about Tullia II... Mm -hmm. The mad one. Yeah, the nut um, ...is she's clearly not happy with her kind of gentle doormat of a husband. Right, OK. Or in Livy's own words... The haughty Tullia was angry... Haughty. ...that there was no <laughs> material in her husband. Sounds a bit wrong. Either for ambition or bold daring, directing all her regard to the other Tarquinius... Him she admired, him she called a man, and one truly descended of royal blood. She expressed her contempt of her sister, because having got a man, she was weak in the spirit of becoming a woman. Right. I can Jealous! see that. <laughs> I, I, I can, so she hates her husband. Because he's, cause he's a bit weak. flaccid. Yeah. yeah. Likes a brother-in-law, because he's a real man in her eyes. Yeah. And hates a sister for not being a real woman. Yeah. yeah. 
Right, I, I, can, I, I can see possibly where this is going. So, anyway, like you said, you're absolutely right. She's clearly got her eyes set on something Evil. bigger. Evil. <laughs> <laughs> on being queen. Um, and as a means to getting this, uh, has her eyes set on the other Tarquin brother. Because in her eyes, she, her husband's going nowhere. So, do, do do we have anything other than her opinion of him to tell us how, was it Aaron's? Aaron's. Just that he's mild mannered. He's just, yeah. he's just, yeah, yeah. So she's now got her eyes set on Aaron's, who he's is a brother-in-law. <laughs> so, to be fair, it's not quite incest. It's more Jeremy Kyle, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the same kind of ballpark. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's immoral. Yeah. It'd be frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of the stuff we've talked about here, this is <laughs> low-level incest. Just, just it's quite, quite, <laughs> it's low quite level there. incest. Compared to other stuff you've told me it is. <gasps> oh yeah, but that's enough about East Manchester. <laughs> oh, he, Rude. he tries really hard to get those jokes in. Rude. You don't have to try hard. <laughs> I'm from a traditional nuclear family, I'll have you know, so you can shut your cake off. <laughs> so anyway. It's not quite the happy, calming marriage Sophie has no. wanted. Uh, so, what was so good about Lucius then? Like, was he Mr. Charisma? Or was he just not a doormat? He's a Hulk of a man, James. <laughs> <laughs> Or not. Um, <laughs> it seems that despite Servius's best efforts, Lucius, the younger brother, yes. um, was not happy about being about Servius being king. Yeah. So he thought that he should be king. Because his dad was king. Yeah, so already the plan to like placate them with marriages has failed. Pretty badly, yeah. yeah. Um, and it seems that he'd been publicly questioning the way in which Servius came to power. So he's out there slandering him around Rome. Or, as Livy puts it... That he held the crown without the consent of the people, having first secured their goodwill by dividing among them, man by man, the lands taken from their enemies. He proposed to question the people whether they chose and ordered that he should be king, but they responded that Tullius was declared king with such unanimous, unanim I can't say that word. <laughs> Agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. As had not been observed in the election of any of his predecessors. Okay. So basically everyone wanted him to be king. Yeah. And yeah, all right, you're saying, well, oh, it's a bit dodgy. He's not wrong. Well, no, but... But yeah, no, you are, of course, correct. I mean, it seems that... Like you said, Servius was such a well-liked king that the Roman people just really didn't care. Yeah. It's like, get over it, mate. He's the king. So yeah. all, all these reforms we'd spoke about last time, they have gone down well. Yeah. Okay. But there was one person who was not very happy, which was um, <laughs> <laughs> the headstrong Tullia. She the mad one. Is, is it, yeah. yeah, this is the younger Tullia. Yeah. So it seems annoyed with her own husband's lack of drive. Mm. So he's basically just sat in the shed looking for a quiet life. That's so this is her dad, isn't it? Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> and her husband sat there going, oh, I'll be fine. Okay. Like I said, sat in the shed, looking for a quiet life. Yeah, just having to lie down, waiting for it all to blow over. Yeah. yeah. Um, so while this is all going on, it seems then that there are increasing, shall we say, meetings between Lucius and the fiery, hot-headed Tullia. Do we know what happened at these meetings? <laughs> meetings. 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 Oh, they can't hear him yet. <coughs> <comments>. No. <laughs> meetings. Uh, okay, they were having meetings. They together. were having meetings. Okay. Maybe they discussed things um, whilst uh, meeting each other meeting. Well at the same time. Well, whilst meeting, they were they were talking about stuff. <laughs> um, I was going to say something really horrendous. I'm glad you did not. <laughs> yeah. So. Just so I'm clear, so end game of all this seems to be to not have a king, to set up some sort of democracy. Did he? That's not her end game. Well, no, 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 no. Was it? Was this described to the daughters and now sons-in-laws, or was this just that will shut them up? They'll be happy, and I can continue to do what I. I like. can have another census. Oh God, census! Right, okay. Plan seems to be falling apart a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> So, as well as whatever these two were up to in these meetings, um, <laughs> stop chuckling. <you. laughs> uh, it seems clear that Tullia begins pressing Lucius to do something about this situation they're in, or, as Livy puts it, 
You and I, she said, would have better been single than bound in a marriage so incongruous and absurd, where each of us is forced by a cowardly partner to fritter out our lives away in hopeless inactivity. Ugh! If God had but given me the husband I deserve, I should soon see my own house. Don't, don't mince her words, does she? She definitely <laughs> does I mean, not. Fair enough, she's just not happy, is she? She's just saying what she thinks. Well, true. Um, can I ask a question? You can. This We had this a bit with the Egyptians. This is... How do, how are we quoting these people? <laughs> how, how's how's Livy? Well, obviously, got... when you're having an affair with your brother or brother sister-in-law and yeah. plotting secret plots, you to document what you say. It. I always have a historian on hand to write down these things. Yeah, I, I do insist on all my conversations being minuted. I know. I'm taking the minutes <laughs> as we speak. Um, yeah, it, it, it's one of these where if it's a bit of a rule of thumb, if there's a discussion in a secret meeting or a secret plot. It's probably made up later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, either way, not long after, they start confiding in each other. <laughs> That's not all they're doing. I, I was um, going to say, what does confide <laughs> mean in this scenario? <laughs> and there is a tragic twist of fate. Well, actually, two tragic twists of fate. God. <laughs> <laughs> so in very quick, quick succession, Aaron's the calm one, and the other, Tullia, also the calm one, mysteriously die <laughs> that doesn't sound dodgy <laughs> at all <laughs> how how mysteriously <laughs> do we know how they died they just died they just went they, away you know just fell over onto a bunch of knives right okay yeah um, um it was lucky <laughs> yeah so it would seem i mean as also this now leaves the angry lucius and the angry tullia free to marry each other yeah. Which they do. Almost oh. as if it's a cunning plan. Yeah, I mean, you say angry, but is it not that they were just like a bit feisty, quite passionate? I mean, you know how this story ends. <laughs> I, I, was about, I was about to say, they've just almost certainly committed murder twice. Two murders. So, I was and, passion, James. <laughs> and pseudo incest. <laughs> Look and do strange things. It's fine. Also, did no one think to stop this? Well, I was going to say, like, this was the whole plan. We don't want these two madheads, these two wreckheads marrying each other. Yeah, so... Oh, it'd be fine. Know, fair enough, you know, mysterious deaths. I, that happens. You know, <laughs> however many years ago that happens. Did no one go, <laughs> you two are allowed to get married? That was, <laughs> that, was the bad, that was the bad joining to start with. I know. No, apparently that was fine. Just like, oh, maybe they've got over it. King, is, fine, King isn't paying attention. Yeah, he's right, off okay. doing another census. God. You have to you have to declare your spouse in a census. Maybe they cross <laughs> just cross them out. So anyway, now that these two more like you put aggro, I prefer feisty, passionate, something like that. Murderous, um, <laughs> treasonous, yeah. incestuous. Sometimes you just want a different husband. So I want to say that's all she's doing. She's just getting a different one. It's I'm fine. I'm looking forward to this because this. I assume this is going to go as wrong as my pro Anthony stance. <laughs> so maybe. <laughs> um, so now they're married, they double down on their efforts to get themselves into power. Yep, and as always with this sort of thing, it seems it's Tullia, the woman who is the driving force behind their plans. And again, to quote Livy, by nagging him in these and other ways. <laughs> I mean, how do you nag someone in a different way? That's that's quite... She's a... very skilled. Mm. She spurred on the young man, nor could she herself rest, angry that when Tanaquil, a foreign woman, could achieve so much as to crown her husband and then her son-in-law, she, sprung from royal blood, should have no weight in giving and taking away a kingdom. Did someone hurt Livy? <laughs> it's always the women he blames for everything. Yeah, I think so. Also, uh, Tullia too has now been described as haughty and nagging. Yeah, I know. <laughs> why Very did nice. Why did Lucius want to marry her? Because <laughs> she told him. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, it seems, James, you are exactly right that in Rome it is always the women who seem to get some kind of <laughs> negative rep, which is, I think, is shocking. But it does feed into this kind of continuing rhetoric that we've got where you've got women that are one of two. So there's never a happy medium. There's never, oh, she's normal, but she's just having a bad day. <laughs> it's always, you know, like, oh, 
angelic or is it she's a demon so there's never kind of somewhere in the middle so they're either very homely calm you know what baby making doormat baby yeah. making doormats yes look after their husbands or they're seen as kind of corrupt and immoral bit deep murderous and, yeah so there's something psychologically wrong with them they're not quite right and it's normally the ones that want power and dare i say a little bit more equality that are kind of i know shocking that are kind of seen as just going completely against what a roman woman should be be interesting to know if there's a latin word for equality i don't think there would be you. <laughs> i'll find out <laughs> But yeah, so it just kind of fits in, doesn't it, with the Yeah, it's, this, we, it's like a literary tradition. Yeah. Yeah. So after this kind of continual nagging of various sorts, <laughs> um, I'm going to research this and see if I can try some out at home. Uh, Lucius Tarquinius goes about meeting with various senators and patricians trying to build a support base. Right. So he's kind of doing, what's the modern term that they use? I'm trying to think. The round... <laughs> well, I know I wasn't thinking of that, but I can't think anyway. But he's trying to get people on his side. Yeah. Um, so they support him. So he particularly seeks out senators and patricians who have been promoted by his dad, Tarquinius Priscus, and he reminds them of how good his family had been to them in the past. He's networking. That's the word. I was right. Okay. For. He's networking. He's networking. Uh, it sounds a bit like. Mobbish. It's a bit of a shakedown, isn't yeah, it? Like, yeah. oh, look how well you're doing. Just remember who gave you all of that. And yeah. Some nice kneecaps you've got there. Yeah. Be a shame <laughs> if someone broke them. And if you don't, I'm going to send her around and she's going to nag her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so he's basically going around. Not the haughty one. <laughs> <laughs> the haughty nagger. Haughty one. So he's basically reminding everyone that they owe his dad and by extension, they owe him everything. Yeah. Right, okay. Did, did, they, did they have this kind of long-standing kind of loyalty to people who put them in positions? Or is I think it too, it's is it too new? That I think it's relatively recent. So it's right, like, okay. yeah, do you remember when your dad used to clean out our toilets and now look at you? Right, okay. Yeah. And he also kind of throws it out there that Servius was the son of a slave and that's a real big scandal for Rome. So it's, that's not something that ever should really have happened. So right. he's the rightful person to be in charge. Does this go down well? Because they surely knew about the slave thing anyway, and things Did they are, care? With they're, some they're people, they're all doing all right, aren't they? <laughs> with some people, yeah, they swallow it hook, line, and sinker. Right. Okay. Uh, I hope they get what they deserve. <laughs> <laughs> when Lucius Tarquinius then thinks he's in a strong enough position, and he's got his mates with him, he makes his move. Livy says. As soon as the time seemed convenient for accomplishing his plan, he rushed into the forum accompanied by a party of armed men, then, whilst all were struck with dismay, seated himself on the throne before the Senate House. So Bo that's a bold in, move, isn't yeah, it? He is. nicked the seat, basically. Right, okay, so is that's how easy this coup is. <laughs> Just wander in and sit on the throne. Not quite, it's a little bit more complicated than that, isn't it? But also, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, his coup is now in full swing. Mm -hmm. Tarquinius demands all the patricians and all the senators assembling the Senate House to confirm him. Yeah. Is, is that how being, being king works? You're confirmed by the Senate? Yeah, yeah. pretty okay. much. So pretty much everyone does turn up, not necessarily to confirm Tarquinius as king, more just to kind of see what the hell is going on. <laughs> just more, like, have you seen him he's on the throne? Yeah. No, he's no, not. I've got to have a look at yeah, this. this. You see this? There's some blokes sat down <laughs> over there. Snacky and wife's behind him as well. <laughs> She's come out too. So when they're all gathered, some mm -hmm. in support, some good. Oh, he sat down. Um, Tarquinius gives this following speech. That is slave and born of a slave after the untimely death of his parents, without an interregnum being adopted, as on former occasions, without any commission being held, without the votes of the people or the approval of the fathers, he had taken possession of the kingdom as if it were the gift of a woman. Okay. That so born, so created king and supporter of the lowest classes to which he himself belongs, through hatred of the high status of others, he had taken their land from the leading men of the state and divided it among the very lowest. Right, so he's okay. basically saying to all the leading men of the state, 
He's taking all your stuff and giving it to them lot out there. Are you going to stand for that? Right, okay. Uh, I mean, he mentioned Interregnum that I assume the Romans weren't as sick of them as I am. No. <laughs> right. But he also, with the um, the taking of things from the rich and giving it to the poor, you know what he's slating there, don't you? Go on. The yeah. census. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, so... <laughs> Who is he addressing when he says the rich? Are the equestrians included in that, or are they new men? He doesn't like them. We're not sure. Right. He okay. just says it's the richest people he's talking to. Right. Okay. So this, you, you would assume if it's the, the richest, it'd be the patricians, yeah. wouldn't you? So while some bloke just sits on his chair, yeah. where's the king? <laughs> Well, as Servius Why by wasn't he sat on it himself? <laughs> well, Servius by this time is quite old. Um, so he's heard that something is happening in the Senate House and he marches over there to sort it out. I mean, when we say march, if he's that old, that he can't even stay sat in his chair. It's that classic, classic kind of old man, I'm going to go over there and sort him out and give yeah. him a good hiding. Anyway, um, he goes over and he stands on the porch, looking in through the doors at the commotion, mm -hmm. um, sees him sat on his chair and shouts loudly. What means this, Tarquin? How dare you summon the fathers whilst I am still alive, or to sit on my throne? Get off my chair. <laughs> yeah, get off my Maybe chair. not the best choice of words yeah. while I'm still alive. Um, to which Tarquin replied that he, the son of a king, occupied the throne of his father, a much fitter successor to the throne than a slave, that Servius had insulted his masters long enough by his unpredictable laws. Right, okay. Not all in back, is he? No. <laughs> Back down! <laughs> it's all going to kick off. Um, and absolutely, this is exactly what happens. After the little row, there are cheers and shouts from supporters of both sides in the okay. Senate. Yeah, which soon turns into a bit of a mass brawl. Really? Yeah. Oh, I love it when politicians... Good kick in. <laughs> politicians kick in off. Is it, the, is it the Polish Parliament? They always have a fight Or there. Korea. They're, there is they're good for a fight. Um, so, yeah, obviously in this melee, seizing his opportunity and the advantage of his youth and strength, mm -hmm. um, Tarquin is, grabs the elderly Servius and throws him down the stone stairs of the Senate House. How many guards? How do you get that close to him? It's all kicking off. It's <laughs> chaos. It's also, that's his father-in-law, isn't yeah. it? Right. So he's just chucked his father-in-law down, down the stairs. But down down also, the stairs. it's generally not cool to push the elderly down a set of stone stairs. No. no. Uh, how elderly are we seeing uh, services at this point? He's easily made in his 60s. Right, okay. So even my modern standards, he's old. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to push an old man down yeah. the stairs. It's not healthy aged, is it? No. <laughs> Very much the opposite. Uh, so I don't have a huge amount of experience throwing old people down stairs. <laughs> really? for, fortunately. I don't know. But um, I don't think it goes well if old people do fall downstairs. Oh, it's not no. over yet, James. Is it not? Maybe there's something else. Oh, good. I was hoping that, you know, <laughs> that might be the end of it. <laughs> so, a, a, well, quite topical, a peaceful transition of power. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So Libby tells us that Servius is in a bad state. I mean... He should be thrown down, down some stairs. <laughs> where, where is this in the forum? How how many stairs are we talking? It's quite significant. We're right. talking at least eight feet of stairs. Jesus. Stone <laughs> stairs. Yeah. Yeah. So he's understandably quite shaken by the events. So he starts to make his way home to recover. Okay. I mean, like hobbling home. Why is no one helping him? <laughs> Broken so hip. Mean. I mean, well, really. He's out of fighting. Yeah. He didn't wake up that morning thinking, oh, well, I'm going to get thrown down the stairs. <laughs> Better get ready for that. So, he's about halfway home, mm -hmm. however, he's halfway there when he's set upon by assassins. You've been sent by Tarquinius, put in place to finish the job. Again, does he not have any guards? He's a king. <laughs> These lictors aren't known for their great protection. <laughs> so yeah, assassins, leap out. Stabby stabby. Stabby stab. Stabby stab, okay. Um, <laughs> how... Is he dead? How brutal a stab yeah. he, he is He's dead. Okay. Yeah. But it's not the end of it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you do to him when he's been stabbed to death? Well, well, I mean, it seems, handily, at that time, Tullia... Oh, God, she's not good about. <laughs> ...was driving a chariot nearby when she sees the body. Did she run him over? Well, Livy <laughs> then tells us... 
Tullia, frantic and urged on by the furies of her sister and husband, is reported to have driven her chariot over her father's body and to have carried a portion of her father's body and wood to her own and her husband's household gods, herself also being stained and sprinkled with it. This is her dad. Nice. She, she didn't just run him over. She dragged what was left of his corpse around Back Rome. home. Why back home? As an offering to the gods. To have a wash afterwards. Who's her household gods? And why are they... Is this a good offering? <laughs> this is horrid. Yeah. I mean, you're not the only one who thought so. Because so shocking is this event that the road then becomes known as the Street of Wickedness or <laughs> the Street of Crime. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So is, is she taking, like, a uh, you know, a turn-off, or is this the same road he was stabbed on? <laughs> this is the road he was stabbed so, on. So this, this road, he was stabbed, run over, and dr carcass dragged through the streets. God. I mean, house sake. prices on that street would go right down. Yeah. Who yeah. wants to live on the Street of Crime? Not ne well, not next door to them. <laughs> It's like a hit and run, isn't it? What More of a doing? hit and drag. Well, the hit is actually for fun, not... How many horses know? drag a chariot? Anywhere between two and four. Jesus. I've <laughs> mm. even written this down just so I don't forget. This is a dad. <laughs> yeah. Not a dead dad, no. Yeah. Was there not another... Was there not a plan B? Was there not a... Right. Run him over first and then stop Was there not a... Right, dad. You're old. Will be king and queen when you're gone. Apparently not. This was the only way to sort <laughs> this, this out. The they only just plan couldn't. They, they just couldn't wait. God. Oh. Yeah, and that ends services. Forty-four year reign. Why did he not have more mates <laughs> after forty-four years? <laughs> what a way years? to go. What a way to I mean, go. or better bodyguards. <laughs> yeah, better bodyguards, more mates, and then he, he, and pavement. He did well, didn't he? Yeah. He was a good king. Why did no one? Do anything to stop this. We'll never know, oh. James. God. I think we've have we just broken your faith in humanity. Well, basically. I mean, they've racked... It's rel oh. it's a, as far as coups go, there seems to have a relatively small body count of three. But it is all their immediate family. Bear in mind, one of those bodies is now probably in three in, parts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, come on, James. I mean, she might have been the first female murderer, murderess, you know, that killed members of her own family, but she wasn't the last. You study murderesses for your degree. You, well, you, I did my thesis on uh, female murderers. You didn't study her? What? No, no, she was a bit too early. Right, okay. What I looked at. Anyway. <laughs> So with that series of unfortunate events, yeah, <laughs> um, we've got a couple of key issues that come out of it. I mean, the first one obviously is that by this point, and you'll be happy about this, but equally sad, James, that the interregnum is dead. Oh no! It's been replaced by I've got to say familial murder. <laughs> Are we going to have another census? No, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with it. <laughs> Yeah, so the interregnum is dead. This Roman system of choosing a good king yeah. has been swept aside by a coup and it's <laughs> clearly becoming... It's moving to, more towards a tyranny and descendant hereditary yeah. rule. So that, I mean, that's one key thing. This idea that the things that made Roman kingship fair, dead. They've gone. As dead as they're, service. They're smeared across the street. They are. So the other thing as well is this kind of portrayal of women. So I would say that she's probably one of the earliest examples, one of, not the, but she's one of the earliest examples of women that are seen as kind of, you say, deviant, immoral, because she is so power-hungry, scheming, cunning. In in the Roman world, yeah. Yeah, quite violent. Um, so she's portraying things that are more seen as masculine, yeah, kind of traits as opposed to what a well, woman should be like. In, in, with, if men did it, it'd be fine. It's good politics. Well, I was, I was going to ask, like all of the things that we seem to know about, except, except for the bit of her dragging a dad around in a chariot. All of these are kind of like behind the scenes stuff that yeah. people wouldn't really know. Oh no, is yeah. this just fitting a narrative for history? Pretty much. Yeah, and they're all written by men. Yeah, and they're all from the male point of view. So they yeah. very much prop up that tradition of where you've got the good and then you've got the bad and the good don't last that long because they either just put up and shut up well, or... So he's had 44 years. <laughs> so, yeah, but he's a man, so it's different. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Tully totally the 
elder. Didn't last very long. No, no. no. Um, it's interesting as well if we think about Livy as he's writing under Augustus and there's Augustan influence in here as well. The, it's not hard to draw a link between this kind of reference to the murder of righteous rulers by the unjust. Right. You can see it's not it's not brazen, but there's hints of. And, yeah. a, and, a, and a father, because he was adopted by yeah, Caesar, Yeah, there's hints, he? Uh, there's little shades of the murder of Caesar. In the Senate House as well. In the Senate House, yeah. in this, and given that Augustus is clearly pro-Caesar, it was his adoptive, you know, patron, yeah. that you can see that there's little hints being put in there. He's trying to whitewash the kind of is, reason for Caesar's is murder. Is the only account of this we have? We don't have anything in that... There is um, another one. By a guy called a guy from um, Diodorus of Halicarnassus, um, but he's much less reliable. Right. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> he's less reliable than. Yeah. Living. He's he's not great with this kind of thing. Right. Okay. So yeah, I mean, and the other thing we should point out that this now really is the beginning of the end for the rule by kings. I'm going to say because I know when we were talking about Caesar, you were saying kind of like how um, the I the idea of a king to Romans is. Deplorable. Like, yeah, yeah. They don't. This is why. Yeah, yeah, they don't like kings, and I'm starting to understand why. <laughs> don't like the wives either. <laughs> no. So there you have it. Our quick overview of the rise of Lucius Tarquinius Superbus. Thank you for listening. We hope this has been useful. As always, leave us a comment below, and until next time, goodbye. Bye. Bye.